Hello. How are you? Um, this is a um, a talk, a lecture on um, as we're doing the spatial I/O project innovation space. A talk that comes out of that um, I mentioned before the um, late '80s. Um, show Star Trek Next Generation, they had a thing called the holodeck. Um, and it basically created illusions. It was the same thing as The Velt, a story by Ray Bradbury, a, a, a room to make things. And now there's a company over here, a company that makes um, these environments. And as you can see from just the promo, um, we have an immersion of information. Um, I've tried this, I've done this before with um, a place called Monkey Town, brought my classes to these. Um, it's to integrate um, uh, kind of styles of information and presence and absence in uh, the interlocutors um, doing collaboration and business. Um, so this is um, a um, a uh, company that makes these spaces. So let's scroll up. Immersive spaces. The company's called Igloo. Why? What is an Igloo immersive space? Um, let's see if I can play this briefly. Short throw projectors, four of them, tables in the middle, coming in from other collaborators, um, kind of heightening the senses. Again, the, the ability to change software. Oops, there's an old cursor from a VR thing. And part of this lecture is to discuss the the collaborative workplace of the future. What what is it? This this both my classes have been about the city, and uh, the new performance space, the new collaborative space. But what are they? And as you can see, these are small rooms. Um, the just like theater, the the actors are separated from this. There is a three hundred and sixty positioning of this. You can move objects around. There they have um, in Unity Engine these things can be built. Unity is free. Um, uh, I don't teach it. I've studied it. Um, but this company, uh, uh, perhaps this is some of the places you're going to work in the future um, if according to the movie you have work. Um, but this is interesting, or maybe we get our entertainment in these. Here are the short throw projectors. Um, there's supposedly a seamless connection between these places. And as I said in my last lecture, I made several attempts to build one of these at Stony Brook Installer and various other places. My um, uh, VR space was another uh, attempt at that with just one projection. Immersive workspace for education, immersive space for enterprise. Um, this is the company, they build them small, uh, scalable. I think at B&H each one of these projectors, higher lumen short throws, or by anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 as far as 3, 6, 9, 12,000 just for the projectors having the space. I don't know what the software is. That can be pretty much custom made. They build these things out to develop uh, immersive kind of structures and quite a bit out and for this is immersive room for an education system. Here's um, cylinders, cubes, and domes. So big, um, both boots on the ground. How do we make one? How do we use spatial I.O. to talk about the aspects of permaculture within urbanism, the aspects of the future of culture in terms of performance, music, and other forms. Um, so that is our starting point. Um, 
let's see if we can get a view of um, what interests me with Matterport is that this is a photogrammetric scanning uh, object um, and uh, we did these immersive spaces for the actor Bill Pullman who had an original piece directed it and we took a big white um, pop-up uh, uh, space Lower East Side and, and projected on it, converted it, things like that. Shared VR technology, let's see what this Matterport thing is. Hey, I'm Joe, and I'm one of the 30 AI voices from Stitcher. You listen to this video and so much. Okay. So here we are in the Murphy Open workspace, which is one of our standard tracking systems which is put on the end. Okay, can this be used for arts and culture? Can this be used to not just aesthetically portray um, uh, uh, information on cities, but can be involved in planning, uh, develop greater cognitive strengths. Um, we had that study four or five years ago, the future of the campus as a cognitive device, um, and all of this was um, important. This is 2021, during the height of COVID. You can choose the tiles. Um, what is interesting with this gang, um, culture, city planning, independent rooms. I propose to make one of these in Singapore. We got a $300,000 grant, but we that was way before there were real short throw projectors. And here it is like spatial I.O., except using Matterport, which is a photogrammetry, you can photograph actual spaces, you don't have to create these in a cartoon fashion like um, Job Trainer and all these things with early VR. Um, so you can imagine the possibilities, especially for culture. Um, Matterport, again, is a, um, there's some low uh, cost photogrammetric um, cameras that can be used on your cell phone. And Matterport will do 360 projections. And this can be used for construction document um, real time. And uh, at the end of the day, spec sheets are used and drawn of uh, construction. So there's an idea of a lot of money saved, a lot of communication, on time, on budget, how well this project is going on. And as you can see with Matterport, it's, it's an amazing world. Um, we can imagine this with doing something in marine biology, doing something in agriculture, doing something in city planning with, with um, maps, real-time maps and physical models. I had you work on SketchUp. But with this and a Matterport uh, camera, which I think has come down to three, four thousand bucks. Um, you can do some serious project management in a space and not have to be there. Um, one of the um, uh, bonuses uh, during COVID. Um, moving on, interesting. Uh, here's culture. Whoops, let's back up. It's the National Gallery. You're moving through spatial temporal lists to see the resolution of each photo. And this is quite interesting, gang. Could we do a production of Lear this way? Um, what, I mean, I can imagine infinite possibilities. And with spatial I.O., People are using this, um, but the dots per inch 
resolution. This is a question, but again, photographed with Matterport. Back to retail, back to commerce, culture, commerce, all of the above. Uh, real estate, um, these are tools. Um, this is a college course uh, examining uh, a couple aspects of not-for-profit um, cultural documents such as a city or a performance. Um, uh, but these tools are um, um, quite amazing. Uh, collaborative meetings, rooms, igloo. Um, let's just a little bit of this. Um, um, and here's what we want to do with spatial I.O. I'm trying to get this done with... All right, skip that. So, uh, a bigger question, gang, is, is this overkill? Is this, um, is, is this too much information? Um, is this also sleight of hand? We have a space like this, we can go places and be in these spaces, but is it really just one person focusing on this? Look at this, the file drag and drop. Um, looking at images, um, I like our nails, um, spreadsheets, is, as we saw the movie, The Future of Work and Death, um, is this a lot of blather? Is this going to redistribute those 2,700 calories around the world to every one of the 8 billion people on Earth, or is this more smoke and mirrors? big open question. So let's explore um, not just the philosophy of um, uh, arts research um, that was this um, open up yes um, this was our attempt we did two years ago right before COVID like barely two weeks before COVID in March of 220. Um, oops, move it up um, here. Um, but we did use photogrammetry. He, this was a story of a painter in Montana and we visited the studio. Um, uh, someone photogrammetrically recorded the studio, studio, we aligned all the points in here, and we proceeded to go to these spaces, look at the, the dialogue, and um, uh, reproject this onto the uh, three or four of these spaces. We had actors um, uh, uh, sort of having dialogue with themselves, um, we tried to get their audience to use augmented reality and see these other aspects of it. Here's Bill. Um, uh, here's a house. Um, there's collaborating with the, the various persons. The, here's the cabin in Montana. Here's one of the bigger wall. We, we were fortunate to have tall ceilings. Tall ceilings, there's the crew. There I am. Um, and um, yeah, and, and here's started off talking about, uh, okay, that's the top level information, but according to um, uh, uh, aspects of this, um, the, um, the larger question um, became um, one of what, what lies beneath. Again, is this, is this um, desirable? Um, so, let's go over these things again. Um, combine these up. I have this up. Um, and a look at a co-working space as a reflection of, of infor information, but also um, uh, where you might be in a few years, what performative aspects there are to this, 
Um, excuse me. Um, I find this just juicy and wonderful and, and uh, begging lots of questions and exciting and maybe um, reversing that aspect of, of jobs that will be obsolete because of AI. Um, jobs as play. There's a concept for you. So this gentleman is in his space looking at augmented reality going through. One assumes with the HoloLens, we did use a HoloLens feature um, of uh, you have these multiple mixed realities going on. I want those ideas from you. Just from these lectures, from studying the medium, um, uh, moving through the portals, um, deciding on a time where we'll have a synchronous meeting and moving through all of this where, what, how will we be. Team collaboration, community collaboration. Net what community is important for urbanism, network collaboration. What can we do in networks that ultimately pushes um, more than emotions, pushes um, molecules around, um, analog things around. Network co uh, collaboration, where, who, what are you looking for? Who will you get your job from? Um, cloud collaboration, um, well, that is with our good old friend, Mr. AI out there in the clouds, deciding, becoming a, a mind in the future, 2050, will there be, as in the movie, uh, with the second part on death, will there be entities, people, whatever, existing in the cloud that we can continue to collaborate with, even though they are physically dead? Um, may we live in interesting times. This is hopefully what this class, beyond your usual Stony Brook bean counting, um, it, it, it elicits these wonderful ideas um, of, of uh, what if we just rearrange ourselves? What if we uh, recreate um, viable silos um, uh, 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 for concentrated work? Teamwork, team collaboration, cloud collaboration will work with AI. And that's a funny version about collaborating with a dead person whose mind has been uploaded and reconfigured in some basic AI about, you know, say it's a famous engineer, architect, or whatever, and seeing what this uploaded AI will do with us as one of the deceased. There's a, there's a, um, an aspect of a science fiction story for you. Video collaboration, boo, like Zoom. Hi, there you are. You're e lying on your bed in your jammies, eating your couch, uh, Count Chocula while you're supposed to be having a serious sociological um, or globalism class and you did not dress the part. You're, you're passing it off during the years of COVID is something that is um, uh, barely worth getting in touch with. Um, so we have the social aspects of social psychology. Um, internal collaboration. Who are you? Um, who are you through the day? Who are you in the future? External collaboration. Who is, even during COVID, who, I ask, a lot of my urbanism class, who's there in the house with you? Is it grandma? Is it, uh, most of my classes were doing one day a week for all of 2021, um, uh, just because of resurgence of this COVID and I um, uh, just had the cold version of COVID this week. Um, it went away in a couple days. Um, but what's the external coll collaboration with people, social distancing, uh, grandma's in the same house with you, your parents, maybe you got a boyfriend, a girlfriend you live with, who, what level of collaboration you can do using these tools. Strategic alliance, this is more along the lines of um, making a project, making this festival of ideas, um, performance, and permaculture. There you go. Um, what happens at the edge of chaos? We can have these collaboration in a chaotic way. Maybe you think my classes are chaotic. I don't. 
Um, I'm trying to elicit uh, creative responses from you. Edge of chaos state, motivation to connect, not too rigid, not too loose. Um, do you want to be in your jammies on your bed with your Count Chocula going to class? Does, do people want to see you that way? Um, big questions. Uh, people with skills and expertise. Um, I'm a professional as well as a professor. Um, I consider myself to have expertise in both realms. The professional um, for-profit guy, the educational not-for-profit guy or a salaried guy in a tier one research university. These two fields complement themselves, but it's a skill, skill and expertise bringing the two things together. People, other people, here's white and green. Um, here's like little molecules that are supposed to achieve common goals, like prepare for hurricanes in the case of Bridgeport. Um, ranking the business value of top types of digital collaboration, uh, potential collaborative span, business value. So this extends beyond our not-for-profit world into um, getting you a job, um, having this class stimulate you into seeing and getting a job and un trying to understand what um, uh, uh, what these new tools, and they are new, um, uh, have for um, uh, veracity. Uh, even at old brick and mortar Stony Brook, which is the largest employer on Suffolk County, therefore, certain amount of this, as in the movie, certain amount of this is just the Doug Rushkoff quote. Um, we earn money to prove that we're uh, valued in getting this stuff that is out there um, as the kind of a definition of what jobs are um, uh, with the notion that 2700 calories are available for every man woman and child on this planet we're earth and somehow they aren't redistributed equally um, in demand yet disengage Colleagues wanting greater access to the person, it tapers off. I'm like, why? I see you. What do you say you're going to do? Are you going to do it? Is it actionable? Sheriff colleagues who consider the person an effective source of information. Um, why would a person be a source of information if we have something like Google? Again, pertaining to the film, uh, the section on work, uh, the section on beating death somehow by uploading would be an interesting corollary. Would those dead, now rearranged um, with AI in cloud collaboration, um, would they have skills that no one living would have? Um, a distributed team focus, unplugging, me time, shallow work. I hate that word, shallow work is unplugging. Unplugging to reflect and absorb and embody uh, information, we are doing a festival of ideas in permaculture, performance in permaculture, um, uh, deep collaboration, shallow collaboration, uh, we time, deep work, okay, a bunch of platitudes. Um, to collaborate, there is a notion to focus. We are focused. My two classes are converging in this social VR space. As far as I know, I'm the only professor on the campus using Spatial.io to collaborate with my classes for the past two years. Um, everyone else is using the boring little stamp set, stamp collection, Zoom, um, which a lot of you have gamed the system of just using it to you know, uh, get in and out of required classes. Barely learn, uh, which is that category in the upper left. Um, uh, using acquiring knowledge on the subject or skill through the education or experience. Yeah, somehow this has to be repeatable. And to socialize. Um, we are the socializing ape um, compared to other early hominids. Certainly the Neanderthals were short-circuited by a kind of a, a, a lack of, of the ability to, even though they had a larger 
cranial size. Um, they had a, sh a shortcoming in the ability to translate these things symbolically um, on and learn uh, from case to case. Focusing, learning, collaborating, socializing. Um, according to this view, all these are important. So what could we do to show um, maybe a, I'm waiting for you guys to give me ideas. Are we doing a performance? Any of you play a musical instrument? Um, uh, is there veracity? Or is there going to be even interest in this? Uh, focusing, collaborating, rejuvenating, socializing, learning. Rejuvenating is what? Um, certainly there was need to do this after um, after uh, COVID. Uh, moving on. Work mode, individual mode, um, task, people related. Um, work mode, find experts, see if someone is available. Greetings, introduction. Um, uh, so that will get us a social presence to multi-presence. Um, there's all these graphs, you know, I'm a graph maniac just because um, uh, often uh, uh, people aren't getting it in, the, in themselves. And as you can see, a lot of this is good old-fashioned Aristotelian quadrants, uh, square of oppositions um, uh, to get to ideas. Uh, low integration, high integration, transdisciplinary is another concept. Um, disciplinary. Um, this is in academia, um, which is rapidly changing, and it is changing while certain members rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. The embrace of the new mold will be fought tooth and nail because so many people spend so long on achieving their disciplines, uh, uh, getting research money, publishing books, getting tenure, and so forth. Um, I tend to gravitate toward interdisciplinary. I'm f flying all over the campus like a little bumblebee to try and pollinate my legs to understand um, what um, confluences uh, can we do. Science A, Science B, Art A, Art B. Uh, in all my academic experience, and I come from three generations of academics, I see still this uh, interdisciplinary action, still very clunky. Um, I remember my dad taking me to these uh, big, uh, uh, ARC 1 classes, Fundamentals of ARC, Fundamentals of Urban Planning, Landscape Architecture, and um, uh, still kind of colliding a couple of things together. Now the transdisciplinary Research goes beyond academia, ooh, dangerous, and involves stakeholders, uh, people who put money down from policies, civil society, and um, as in the case of resilient Bridgeport by Yale, which the urbanism class is studying, or going to um, uh, the Baryshnikov Center and seeing Cherry Orchard done with uh, online aspects, but also with a strange uh, robotic factory arm. Um, how are you engaged in a transdisciplinary, a, a synchronous sort of collaboration? So, science A, science B, art A, theater, art B, urbanism, architecture is an art, and stakeholders are. Um, people to which this has a use value in the real world and getting out of um, the model of a monastery factory warehouse that unfortunately because of the disciplinary model um, the academia has become um, onward. There it is. Discipline, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinarity um, impact on a community, impact with ideas. This is why um, research and development uh, 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 divisions at um, Google 
Um, certainly Elon Musk is full of these ideas at uh, least we forget started with PayPal um, has exploded and so forth uh, transdisciplinary uh, uh, multi-additive and more, more graphs gang just to show I want to delineate but also conjoin um, and in this these savage um, factory style educations in public schools all over the world especially in STEM subjects um, you know, understandably where do we find a transdisciplinary um, aspect I'm teaching urbanism and digital narratives after COVID um, the impact of um, these uh, classical ideas of urbanism mostly in design science of flows engineering with new aspects of the telematic which is things things digital with an, a, a biological impact from viruses um, what happened um, uh, disciplinary thing creates silos um, yeah and these graphs are way too facile but um, the university in a changing world traditional models applied research curiosity based you know this is a helpful graph a little more uh, high res too um, that explains in a simple graph way what has to happen in a clunky big old university where everyone is swimming in this zero-sum relationship of winners losers if you win I lose instead of saying we can collaborate and do these things um, with these accolades um, yeah so more graphs principles of collaboration this chart is very simple similar to the notions of reflexive um, design you have a shared vision maybe not maybe some wacko like Elon Musk has a vision and uh, brings certain people along uh, create partnerships certainly with capital certainly with uh, moving funds around in the university um, which has gotten very myopic um, goals and metrics yeah metrics are important they they impact upon the incoming and outgoing but I am a deep a believer in vitalism <coughs> which a little bit transcends metrics it's there leadership and communication someone somehow driving the project through and expansion sustainability okay collaboration cooperation for that these are all utopic almost grade school version of what should happen and um, often, as I'm reading the Malcolm Gladwell book on bomber mafia, the Norden, the inventor of the Norden bomb site, trying to create an accurate bomb site, which seems like a strange thing to talk about, but without the context of World War I, where ballistically millions upon millions of soldiers were dying on the field, and they're thinking of what is the next best weapon to stop all wars that's part of the the um, notion of, um, uh, of of coming up with uh, with s solutions to this um, stakeholder collaboration innovation um, social big data okay we're going on what I really want to see coming styles delineation visual auditory physical um, verbal logistical social solitary yes 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 we know all of that that's what happens at a party or in a bar or at a concert um, we can parse it down but the fun is putting all these together at a beautiful um, modern hip Shakespearean performance um, normative community challenges to get yeah all of these are cool and good and help us along uh, 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 I'm a designer because I can parse this out and then re put it together um, in some level zone of proximal development strategies here we go moving on um, uh, uh, tech organizational okay let's get beyond the graphs and show the spaces of work um, 
in the beginning 22 years of the 20th century, up until COVID, let's just say conveniently, there was a little caesura there, a, 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 a block, a stoppage. Um, the, and it happened before too, but there's um, a great concern about um, what, are, what, are, what are the optimal ways of the people work beyond the great cubicles? Um, go to any of those offices up at um, the admin building at Stony Brook and these, these horrific gray cubicles are there, you know, just like out of the, the, the spoof, uh, the comedy show, The Office or something like that, uh, little eggs in a crate. Um, and uh, uh, for those nascent designers, which I want all of you to think about, we're, we're between the arts and the sciences here in the realm of design, which I think is uber groovy. This is wonderful. This is, um, and if you haven't opened your mind up to that yet, um, uh, I want you to go pedal to the metal with our final um, spatial I.O. project. Um, what makes people work? What makes people hang out? What makes them not um, bark up the wrong tree? What makes them monetize things instead of just creating a culture of work? What makes them not overwork? What makes them met these young people in this social media uh, group uh, company? As young people in the mid 20s, they're already pulling down 120, 130K a year, both of them, a boy and a girl. And they're all working 12 hours a week. Um, they're chasing the Yankee dollar. They're liking the Yankee dollar. They're living in New York. These are friends, uh, children of friends of mine. And um, suddenly they fall in love. Suddenly they are you know, in a romantic thing, which was against, even in a space like this, against the open culture of the very enlightened um, uh, social media company. Uh, what are you guys doing? And the j bosses tried to separate them. Um, they eventually um, did have a relationship, moved in together. A couple years later, they, they broke up and one guy was fired. Um, nothing to do, maybe nothing to do with that thing. But how do we, how, how do we make these, again, silos in the brain, should we? Uh, when you're designing a city, um, uh, I now currently live in a city outside of New York, very extremely interesting city, um, which made half of all the bullets for the world, selling to two sides in a war, Remington. And now it's uh, basically five, six different um, types of ghettos here. Um, disadvantaged, the factories still lay ruined. There's one two blocks away. Half of it's burned down. The other they turned into kind of a cool um, flea market type thing. That made Remington typewriters at one point. But anyway, how is this different than the factory work? Uh, secure AI, collaborative AI, core AI, this is that notion one day in the future you will be working on the job with someone who's dead. <laughs> uh, stranger things have happened. Um, and that upload on that person's mind is there. One day you will have some oligarch or politician who does not want to die, is a mayor, is elected, and they're dead. Um, mark my words. Um, this is the strangeness of the world. Um, so let's go. Uh, connect, think. Um, we had that thing about focus. Um, uh, having spaces that help you focus, inform. So we have connect, sitting down at a coffee table. Um, in some ways, the most variable uh, 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 kind of workroom, and I enjoyed these in Brooklyn. Um, is the coffee shop, sitting with a laptop, doing your work. That's why they're immensely important and vital, and, um, and you have things like coffee hyping you up. 
um, and they become very stimulating. You can tune out, you can do what you want, you can get a heck of a lot of things done. In a coffee shop, you can be hopefully non-ADD and get these things through and so forth. And uh, connect, think, do, inform. Um, do, uh, I suppose, write checks, make actions, so forth. Here's a ground plan, another ground plan. I worked at a art graduate level art college in Singapore, brand new made, um, government funded, sci-fi type building, and they had an open glass conference room apart from the little Stony Brook um, uh, faculty rooms which are closed to students and so forth. Um, uh, you see a lot of desks encircling each other. You, you do see these cubicles here. Uh, co-working is where your social network is, um, using WeWork, using all these other things to go on and creating shared reception as someone waiting in private office, lounge area, kitchen area. A lot of these things aren't new. Um, the organizational man, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, great cubicle, might be. Um, I saw a film from the 80s on brokers right before computerization, and it seemed like mayhem. Um, uh, uh, cutting short, many, I had a couple of friends who were high powered uh, financier broker types, and one of them died quite early in his life. I don't know if it was related. Um, might be. Um, he was a theater director before he became a financier. Um, uh, interesting sort of uh, trajectory. Um, on Wall Street, grow your business, hire it, be hired, um, be more creative, be more creative. I hate that term because um, I think the question is to be open to be creative, which is part of this class. You know, if anyone's hearing this lecture all the way out, I usually make these about an hour. Um, uh, and I'm constantly trying to promote you guys from being um, more creative. Flexibility, happiness, well, that's kind of elusive, and it belongs to some. Let's you know, get back to spaces. Um, traditional office, cubicle, cubicle, sit there, see someone picking their nose, see something, someone with their Garfield cat collection on their little personal pin board. Um, co-working space, everyone's moving around, someone brought their bike in. Um, it seems like that person who's, um, as I saw in one lecture, not mine, um, lying in their bed eating their Count Chocula in their jammies. Um, that seemed to push the propriety of um, the whole situation beyond. But consider that, as we saw the movie, The Future of Work and Death, um, just wow, how much work at a big tier one university is actually real, um, actually is impactful, actually has people signing checks behind it. Um, a great Jack Nicholson film called About Schmidt, um, where some clock watcher has been watching his clock for, as the movie said, uh, 40 hours a week for a total of 45 years. That's a lot of years. Um, last day he looks at the clock he gets up and suddenly he doesn't know what to do his wife's dead he falls in love with another person in his rv um it's just every his daughter is off the rails um things change let's get back to the spaces so here's more of an antiseptic space this is typical of um we got the glass open conference thing. You have individuals with focus, collective focus, typical of an architectural firm, kind of um, more a Scandinavian model, these big lights here. Uh, let's get away from graphs for a little bit. Uh, there's where we want to be, in the middle between cooperative and assertive. Yes, uh, what's the bottom line? Um, as many people have different notions of reality. Space, community, um, get beyond that. Oh, important, there's a thing called, there's capital chasing the Yankee dollar, and then there's a thing called social capital. Networks belonging, safety, reciprocity, 
participation, citizen power, values-led living, diversity. That seems to say you're, as the movie pointed out, um, we have in the 20th century conjoined the notion of work inextricably with the notion of leisure. Um, that for once, beyond the agricultural realm of just putting corn in, hoping to get a good crop, maybe selling some for a profit, but a lot of it taking for yourself. We've come to what the great Canadian theorist Dallas, Dallas Smythe said about media. Um, one third of our life is sleeping, hopefully less so. One third of it is working eight hours a day. And one third, eight hours is less spent with um, uh, uh, family, friends, intimates, so forth, and more f uh, spent with media now that we have the delivery right at us. Um, this is something to think about the, uh, the, um, the festival of new ideas, performance, and permaculture. Um, uh, so what Smythe said is that we use this media time not as leisure, really, your TikTok's not, um, you're watching Netflix, is actually to retrain you into the values to make a veracity of your work, um, it, which is what they were talking about in uh, the movie uh, between uh, 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 this idea as they brought up Guy Debord and then Doug Rushkoff saying oh, we need to be re-educated as to the values of work, why we're working, Rushkoff said, in order to validate the things we're supposed to be getting, um, not use value in itself. Um, and this is interesting, I read this years ago in a Storecki book and Chris Anderson about emergence it is scientifically proven that um, outside your strong ties, family, friends, good friends, school chums, intimates, um, so forth, that the weak ties will actually get you hired. Uh, kind of an interest, and I went back and went over all my thoughts in my mind, it was actually the weak ties, um, saying that these nodes were created, um, I think, there was some coverage in one of the films I made you uh, watch on that. Um, okay, let's, and there's this quality of taking Dallas Smythe and saying, um, all right, one third of my life will, what I used to think was entertainment or leisure was actually more importantly retraining so I have a veracity um, interest in enslaving myself for the eight hours to pretend I'm working in order to justify the things I'm about to get, not so much the money. Um, uh, going onward, so more spaces, um, funky, off-center, in a loft, painted floors, stimulating, maybe, uh, architectural elements, um, this is kind of like a ski lodge in the hills something like that. Um, nice little tea set here with a little gold room. Uh, design well, this is designed for a little bit of Dramamine here because the high contrast is meant to create an over-caffeinated situation. Um, a little, my, someone using up a smart board here to go over this stuff, like what should we do? Um, uh, with his collaborative. The trouble with this is that uh, with the groups we lack focus and feeling as a professor after COVID um, uh, the, and certainly with the notion that you can get a better education on YouTube um, uh, what, what, are we, what should the professor as a um, Virgilian guide through what he or she considers curatable and important information, such as the necessity to be creative and to design a f festival of new ideas for toward performance and permaculture, or 
this really down the road type thing is what if we everyone dead person uploaded their minds which the film said would happen um, do we have to work with them are they going to be collecting a wage why would they collect a wage this is why this film is so infinitely stimulating in, in raising more questions than it answers more spaces a little more uh, Scandinavian type setting um, this was a tech firm in Switzerland um, creating little focus cube self focus cubicles everyone come out to the table and work on this I, I can see in these spaces the amount of passive aggressive sort of leaning in on someone and say you gotta stay later for work or you're fired um, not the Donald Trump show um, uh, and you know the the infantilism of the little swing in the middle. I don't I don't know what that creates. Yet you're infantilizing. Yet um, two co-workers are uh, eyebrows arranged if two co-workers decide to have a, a relationship. I, I don't know. There's many dichotomies. Um, this class is ecumenical. Stands outside, not necessarily of. A profit driven motive I'm trying to give you skills so that you get in to a habit of bringing down the silos between the two particularly since 50% of the go jobs will be gone and as you saw from the movie that the jobs that will remain are the jobs of um, uh, people people to people connection Here's a hip dude sitting there chatting with his coworker in these little uh, cubicles. It resembles hotels. It resembles a little bit about the grade school or high school involved here, the class design of the 70s and 80s, and the, the Steiner schools, the, the Montessori's um, attempted all these experiments. Um, a friend of mine said she sent her kids to a Steiner school uh, till seventh grade, and she said by third grade she was where they could barely know how to read. And they're right now both getting their PhDs at Yale. So I don't know. There you go. I, I do wish that our great um, STEM Research One institution did promote. Uh, and I hate this word, thinking outside the box. The box is already there. Thinking outside what box? We've got to solve some real serious uh, global problems. What is the best place to do that? What is the best place to do a um, um, a job? Um, here's a Dutch company that has the office space lifted on a crane in the middle of an old factory pretty cool um, going to work at these places why would you want to go to work at these places um, a lot of these resemble kind of hotel lobbies the, the function of the hotel is to give you a sense of ubiquity this could be anywhere on earth and you are the absolute first person who's ever used this room that's part of the algorithms of the hotel room um, same thing here for the so-called creative workspaces high vaulting whimsical placement of lights instead of the oppressive uh, fluorescence these are using white umbrellas as lights um it reminds me of the squid game um which is ex to me extremely interesting taking a child's game um as a very clever um working in a borgesian way of a notion of why we work, what if our spending supersedes our work, our ability to um, validate what we did have. And that's taking that Rushkoff quote from the movie and then applying it to um, uh, uh, Squid Game is a, a, a really cool thought experiment. Um, another workplace Ooh, it's almost like a, a um, hip hotel spa in the middle of a woods here um, a, a co-working space in Russia 
um, another work environment space, very whimsical. Um, getting through this, um, I want to get back to the one box. One box is your laptop. Is your here's a VW um, Bug microbus parked in the middle of this. I assume they're going to go go to Grandma's house in the thing. Pretend um, the coffee shop ethos. Having too much coffee. Um, this is uh, famous to the the kind of amphitheater area design suddenly cleared away and open for um, uh, seminars and so forth. Um, again, that ethos. Um, and here's the holodeck of Star Trek, which has remained an ideal. They're not the first people to think of this thought experiment and what is, um, as they're flying through space, um, they have this idea of what would happen if they went through inner space and solve certain problems about flying through space, have this teleportation center. Um, rig it as something. I think the Hamlet on the holodeck is um, an important book about, talk, early book in the 90s talking about um, collaborative spaces of the future. MIT did a lot of these, real life holodecks, so they're making it. That company I just show you was part of um, this, uh, these people making the space. This is the Igloo. Um, you get it in many different sizes and flavors. Um, I've attempted to make a bunch of these. My VR studio at um, Stony Brook might come close, at least it's a space. Um, uh, the dome, the circles, the, the cone, six meter cylinder, um, again with short throw projectors around it. Big, uh, and this is the constipated version, probably I did this in Singapore, one like this, and it's like seeing everyone else on the same edge and who's going to get up and dance, uh, I don't know. Um, the, the talking head, the stuffed shirt, the person from the neck up, which we are in America, expressive of that is part of that. Um, uh, a person working on an item which is photogrammetically scanned. Uh, again, the constipated version, we're like, hi gang, good to see y'all. Um, we see the other group react. Performance, music, theater, um, what could be done? I have many ideas. Um, but we'll see about that. Um, and here's the good old-fashioned cave from Canon Art Lab in Tokyo. It went there in 96. And they had a full one, two, three, four, five uh, projected surfaces. No short throw projectors. Projection happened back here. Oh, no, no, it didn't happen on a reverse um, projection screen. Um, difficult. So here it is. And here are, are we are in um, our spatial IO. Um, will we care? Gang, will we care? Uh, empathy. Um, I could haul you to the um, Baryshnikov um, orchard, cherry orchard, and, and you're just sitting there like, it's supposed to be good for you. Um, what um, talks, descriptions, ideas we have of this, with me as a professor less concerned about rigidity, silos more concerned about curation, Virgilian guidance, um, taking you to something that maybe YouTube or an immersive space can do better than my words and saying this is valued, this is important. Make your own questions. Um, we rounded the corner, here we are in spatial. Now, brand new, this summer, you have legs, um, as you saw in the demonstration. Um, should be fun. Uh, I want some fun. I want some people to remember these things. Which, we got the the good old 80-20 rule. 20% um, of students get into it and seem to care and seem to 
take off from that standpoint in 80 don't sometimes they get 80 percent carry um some people are too shy to care um but here we are vr ar mr uh, mixed reality this is what we are attempting with cell phones laptops i will have a um an oculus quest if you have it um, my two classes i'll devise in synchronous moment so we can all climb in this thing the holodeck together see you next time